morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me here this morning to speak to you. Um, I'd met with Stuart probably about six or seven months ago now to talk about the business that we have in Gen Analytics and the role that we are playing, um, working with organisations across Scotland and throughout the UK to really have an honest and open conversation about diversity and equality in the workplace. No one can avoid these conversations these days. It seems to be every day that we um, look at something in the press talking about diversity and inclusion. And we've taken an approach to look at this from a data point of view and to talk to companies about the business benefits of a diverse and an equal workforce. There's still a long way to go, which I'll outline in my slides, um, but I'm really just keen today to share some of our findings with, with, with yourselves and maybe have a bit of a conversation at the end of the presentation, potentially on some questions that you might have. There's quite a lot of statistics in the slides that I'm about to show, so I'd mentioned to Stuart that we would be happy to share these with, with the delegates afterwards. So Gen Analytics was formed just about 18 months ago, and the reason why we formed our business was because when we went in to talk to companies about equality and diversity, and bearing in mind 99% of businesses in Scotland are run by men, um, when we talked to men about equality and diversity, they would say, that's an HR issue, can you go and speak to HR? And we recognised that in order to get this on the conversation at boardroom and at senior management level, we had to talk about data and analytics. It's still not an area that many people feel comfortable talking about in terms of equality and diversity. People are concerned that they might say the wrong thing, which again, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about later. But for us, it was about removing the emotion around diversity and inclusion and talking about statistics. So I'm gonna talk a bit this morning about race, disability, LGBT people in the workplace, and women in the workforce, and talk about the impact that that can have on our economy. But there are a few uncomfortable truths out there, so I hope that you're all sitting comfortably this morning as we go through these. Here are just some of the statistics that people with a disability face in our country today. Uh, they are less likely to be employed than non-disabled people. They are earning less than non-disabled people. And it's estimated that it's going to take over 200 years to close the disability employment gap. If you put that into the context of the gender pay gap, where the estimates are that it will take another 70 years for us to close the gender pay gap. So 200 years for us to close the disability employment gap. And disability is a whole range. Um, it's not just physical disabilities. There's many more issues now coming out in the workplace about people with mental health. Interesting that 2% of the working population actually become disabled every year. So how potentially can workforces look to adapt to that? 13% of the public sector workforce is disabled compared to 11% of the private sector workforce. So one of the interesting things that we would look to look at is what is it about that's the public sector versus the private sector? Potentially they are more inclusive because the public sector has been working much longer in equality and diversity. Skills Development Scotland, I know we're speaking later this morning and have been doing a huge amount of work to try and promote apprenticeships um, for people with a, a disabled background. But yet only at the moment, 3.9% of modern apprenticeships are awarded to people with a disability. So again, there is quite a significant journey ahead of us. But what I'd like to draw your attention to when I'm talking about the economic and business impact is that bottom point in these slides. If we were able to have a 5% rise in employment of disabled people, we would contribute an extra £6 billion to our economy. So when Ian's talking about the challenges of Brexit and potentially a challenge in identifying people coming in from overseas, we have a huge talent base here in Scotland and that's just from people with a disability. We then talk about race and that's a very uncomfortable conversation as well sometimes. If we look across the room, we all represent a certain demographic um, and there's issues with how we look at race and our employment in Scotland. Again, um, Katie, I'm not picking on SDS, but highlighting the statistics to show that 1.6% of modern apprenticeships in Scotland are currently taken by black and ethnic minorities. But it's important to look at why that is. Where are individuals from that background getting information about apprenticeships? How are they being mentored? Where are the role models? 
There's a very good phrase that I use quite a lot and many other people do when you look at talking about diversity and inclusion, you cannot be what you cannot see. So if people are going into workforces and they don't see anyone else that looks like them or is from the same background, it's not always a comfortable place to be in. But again, if we look at the benefits to the UK economy, when we're talking about sluggish economic growth, we would have an extra £24 billion per annum in our economy if we were actually able to have full representation from the black and ethnic minority community in this country.